What would you get if you took a road derailleur, a mountain bike derailleur, and a touch of print and put it in a blender? Well, it might not taste very good, but it might look something like this, a derailleur that you can shift with road shifters, but it has the massive capacity for a big cassette. All this and more in today's Cave of Bad Ideas. Welcome everybody to the Cave of Bad Ideas where we learn to do the right thing by sometimes doing the wrong thing. And today is a massive episode. I'm really stoked to share with you guys this cassette and this derailleur hack. I think we are just about there in terms of finally having an awesome viable budget mullet solution. But before we check this out, I do want to do a little bit of myth busting. I've gotten quite a few comments from people saying that they can shift an NX Eagle rear derailleur uh, using the Rival 22 brifter. On paper, this shouldn't work because as we know, the road brifter uses exact actuation and the NX Eagle rear derailleur uses X actuation. Totally not confusing whatsoever. I didn't think it would work, still people insisted, so I gave it a try. And my findings with the particular derailleur I have and this particular shifter is that it does not work. I could get 10 of the 11 gears, but certainly not the full range. And even of those 10 gears, it was a little bit bodgy. For those of you that are able to shift an NX Eagle rear derailleur with a rival shifter, I don't know what's going on. I've not been able to replicate it. I've actually used two different NX Eagle rear derailleurs and still no luck. So either you're super lucky or you're not actually using these parts that you say that you're using. I'm gonna say myth busted, Rival Brifter does not shift an NX Eagle rear derailleur, at least on any 11 speed cassette I've tested it with. Next on the agenda is actually some reader mail. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught my 80s parody video. I actually flashed a PO box address where you could send your internet comments and only one person so far has uh, taken me up on it. So I will read their postcard. It is from uh, Sal Ponce in the Washington area. He asked, do you ever sort out the B screw? Anyway, thank you for the channel. You're an inspiration and make me want to get out and ride a bit more. Well, thank you, Sal, for writing in. You are the first person to actually write and use our PO Box address. So if you can contact us somehow via our email or Instagram or something, we will send you a sticker pack. Okay, moving on to not uh, PO Box comments. These are just the regular internet comments. I thought I would answer all these in a fell swoop just because they keep getting asked over and over and over again. And I'm tired of replying to them in the comments. Uh, first big question that keeps coming up is why not a two by slash three by? And the answer is money. money. I'm on a budget. Also, it's quite a bit uncertain whether uh, the Bombora will take a two by so that I didn't want a special order part then be on the hook for that. So I wanted to go with something that was a known uh, factor with the bike. So it just went one by just to keep it simple. Next common comment is why not just use Shimano and Tanpan? And that is because I don't have a Shimano or a Tanpan. For whatever reason, I am all in SRAM at the moment, not a single uh, Shimano component here. So it's not because I don't like it or because I don't think it will work. It's just, I don't have it. So there. A variation on that is why not use the JTEC Shiftmate? The Shiftmate, if you're not familiar, is very similar to the Tanpan. It adjusts the cable pull ratio so it can use a uh, SRAM road shifter and have it communicate to a SRAM mountain bike uh, rear derailleur. And one reason I haven't tried that combo is because there's actually no US distributor of the JTEC Shiftmate, at least to my knowledge. Another kind of strange suggestion I keep getting is why not just use a mountain bike group set and use the Paul adapter to uh, mount the mountain bike shifter to the handlebars. And if you like that solution, you are free to do that. For me, uh, I would prefer the shifting to either be in the bar end or in the brifter. If anything, it would get in the way of the different bags I'd like to put on the bike. Another thing that people keep suggesting is the E13 9 to 46 uh, cassette. Yes, that would be an awesome solution. But one reason I don't want to go that route is I don't want to deal uh, with, sh with changing the free hub body to an XD free hub. I've got White Industries hub in the rear, so that's a hundred bucks for the free hub, then kind of messing around with it, installing it. And then I lose all like cross compatibility with the rest of my parts here. And to continue to experiment like we have been would be just a royal pain. So I'm resisting as much as I can to not go to an XD free hub. 
and the last reoccurring uh, comment is why not use the electronic shifting system by Archer. So if you're not familiar with the brand Archer, they, they actually make a pretty ingenious shifting system with uh, two shifter pods back here and this kind of servo motor that you attach to the rear chainstay and it works with any derailleur. And for me, the one reason I don't want to go that route is actually I don't really care too much for electronic shifting. There just seems like there's a lot that could go wrong. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I'm a curmudgeon that way. I like cables. And lastly, guys, just because I try these particular setups doesn't mean I think they are the best in the world. They are simply what is available to me in the cave of bad ideas. I'm truly working with uh, what I have available, what I can get sent to me. And yeah, so that's why that's why these products. All right, let's get on with this cool stuff today. Uh, so you guys saw in the last video, we were able to get index shifting up here by the hood with the Gavinol shifter. Totally awesome and viable solution. And right when I had that figured out, this package came in from Garbaruk. Garbaruk is a formerly Ukrainian company which recently moved to Poland. They initially specialized with some motorcycle parts and have gone into bicycling and they produce a wide host of pretty interesting products. The two which caught my eye, which they sent over to me to review and try out for the channel, is their 11 speed wide range cassettes, as well as their SRAM rear derailleur long cage modification. First off, let's talk about the cassette. It is a thing of beauty. The first 10 cogs are CNC'd out of a single piece of aluminum and that is then pinned to the large blue anodized ring. Amazingly, as big as this cassette is, it weighs in just a hair over 300 grams. So that is considerably lighter than the Sunrace option and not that much heavier than the uh, much vaunted E13 9-46 cassette. So you get that benefit of that wide range without all the weight and without going XD. But I think the real interesting star of the show has to be this SRAM rear derailleur long cage modification kit. When I was going back and forth with them, I asked them if they'd ever used that uh, rear derailleur kit on a rival rear derailleur and they actually had not. So this was kind of a first, both, both for me and for them to see if it would work. I was a bit of a guinea pig, but uh, it worked out okay. So basically how this worked was I took my SRAM uh, rear derailleur, removed the pulleys, removed the derailleur cage very carefully. Uh, I made sure to mark the pulleys so I knew which was the top and the bottom with a Sharpie and basically replace it with a Garbaruk uh, long cage and uh, pulley wheels. So I've heard whispers online of a hack like this where you can actually take, uh, if you have a spare Eagle rear derailleur, you can remove that long cage and put it onto a rival rear derailleur. I didn't want to buy a completely new and perfectly functioning uh, rear derailleur to, only to render it useless so I could do it with this mod. But you might have an Eagle rear derailleur that you're not using so you could definitely experiment that way. Garbrook has a uh, PDF instructions on how to do this on their website. It's fairly simple. You know, I was a little bit timid to try it just because, you know, I'm, you know, not the best mechanic clearly and mostly I just try not to break things and this was this and this seemed like a good way to actually render my rear derailleur useless but I move slowly methodically carefully being sure that, to mark parts and take notes and actually film it so if I did mess up I can rewind and see what I did wrong and I was able to do the long cage uh, rear derailleur transplant in about 10 minutes and yes I did pick colors that were a little bit on the garish side because hey why not it would go well with the crust bumbora but they do have more subdued colors if you know anodized purple and teal aren't your thing but let's take a closer look at it so the first thing you'll notice is that these jockey wheels are um, anodized aluminum so metal it, it kind of replaces the plastic uh, pulley wheels from the old derailleur i know some people have suggested that these you know sound really tinny uh, i've yet to experience that i mean granted it is all fairly new the thing people uh, wondered was does the lockout still work uh, with this cage and on my particular setup, yes, it does work. Well, how does it shift? Well, let's find out. So in my opinion, this shifts amazingly well. I mean, basically uh, the basic concept is that it still maintains the, you know, the road cable pull uh, because it is using the upper part of the derailleur but it just gains the range of a mountain bike because of the longer cage and the pulley wheels. And going up and down the cassette uh, is pretty flawless. 
I think how this shifts compared to when I used the uh, wolf tooth and the Sunrace cassette, this is much smoother. So no problem getting up to the big uh, gear there, no problem dropping down. You know, one shift, one click. So in terms of the quality of the shifts, it's really nice and crisp and just precise as if this was just a regular size road cassette. So really transparent, nothing funky, doesn't grind, way smoother than the Sunrace cassette. I mean, this thing just works. Again, this is the backpedaling. I know some people like to do this. Uh, for some, it's an indication of whether you know, this binds or not, but the cassette is just silky smooth. The shifter just works awesome. This, I mean, this is like, a, this is a legit solution to the budget mullet. So what are the downsides? Uh, you know, for some, it could be a little bit spendy. The cassette is about $250. I mean, to my mind, this is the lightest 11 speed, you know, 11 to 50 cassette out there on the market. Really doesn't have any other competition. So if that's what you want to run and you want something lighter than the Sunrace, then this is what you got. The cage mod itself is I believe like 60 to $70. Uh, you can get it without the pulleys and just reuse plastic pulleys if you have it. Um, again, another option, if you already have an Eagle uh, rear derailleur at home, you can pop that cage off and then very gingerly attach it to the rival cage. I know many people have done this successfully. Uh, depending on what model of cage, you may or may not lose uh, the, the cage lock, so just be aware of that. But this system works awesome. And I know, and I know there's that person, I can already hear the comment, you know, shifting it on the stand is just fine. That's nice and academic, but what about in the real world under load? Again, guys, it's winter here in Montana, but I did brave the icy roads to take this uh, a couple miles, test the shifting, shift while standing, shift while going uphill, shift into the lowest gear, and it works awesome. 100% confidence in this system so far. Uh, you know, long-term durability, clearly I can't test that because I've only had this for about a week. But I think I will leave this drivetrain uh, on the bike until California, just because it seems like the most legit modification in this whole series. So in terms of cost, yes, it's not the cheapest option, but when you compare it to the SRAM Axis uh, alternative, you can buy this drivetrain like four times over. I'm really stoked I learned about this company and that they were willing to send these parts out so I can test them and share them with you guys. I'm really looking forward to riding this uh, drivetrain all over California and all over Arizona next couple months. I feel like I've learned so much about derailers and uh, shifter compatibility in this whole Cave of Bad Ideas series. We've discovered lots of bodgy options, uh, which, which technically work. We've discovered some legitimate options, some really budget ones using, using products from MicroShift and friction shifting and all that good stuff. And we have arrived to a, what I think is a legitimate substitute for the Axis mullet drivetrain if you want to stay cable and if you want to keep some money in your pocket. So what a cool journey. Uh, we've, we've we've all gone through. There's a couple more things I want to try. I've got this idea of the ultimate bomb-proof uh, adventure drivetrain that's going to be nine speed, that's going to be wide range. If you want to learn about all these successes and failures in the Cave of Bad Ideas, be sure to check out the playlist. And if you have any uh, questions about this guy, ask those in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. And as always, guys, keep the self side down.